Oh my gosh, you look Come gorgeous. Here. Do you mind if I turn the camera on no, you? It's fine. Oh my god, sorry, I'm just taking it in. Wow. <laughs> nice to see you again. Good to see you. Thank you for getting all ready. You are okay, welcome. Me, okay, the clothes are so sorry. Thank you for letting me come into your room and for, you know, taking the time to get ready and talk with me. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I was very excited when you asked me to tell you my story, and I'm definitely happy to do that. I'm very introverted and a little shy, and I know that's kind of crazy being an entertainer to be that way, but, but it is. Ladies and gentlemen, a true artist, Annie Lennox. So oh, you live in North Carolina. Is that where you grew up? Yes, yes, North Carolina. It's all this little small area that you can get to each city within like 15 to 20 minutes from. My parents were really strict, wouldn't like let me have friends over to play and stuff like that. And some of the terms like trans and a lot of those things weren't talked about. They weren't, you know, in the media. We didn't have computers or we didn't have computers where we could surf the internet. People didn't talk about it on TV, so it's like, you knew you were different, you just couldn't necessarily put a name on what you were. I can remember when I first started, um, so many entertainers would get ready at the bar mm. and wouldn't get ready at home because there was an old law on the books in North Carolina that if you were in drag, you had to have two articles of male clothing on or you could be arrested. So we would be a lot, we would be real paranoid about getting ready and leaving to the bar and drag. If we were performing, we would usually get ready there. And then before we left the bar, we would get out of drag. It was a really conservative and kind of rough time. By me doing drag, it kind of let me still be in touch with my feminine side. It's like, it's kind of like I was having to lead a double life. You know, I was my regular self and then I was this drag creation that I had came up with. But the thing with being trans is it's something that I've known since like I was a little kid. Like I can remember like being five years old and like going to sleep at night and praying that I would wake up and that God would fix his mistake and I would be a little girl. Back then you didn't want to do anything that you would have thought that would have embarrassed um, or upset your family. So I chose to put it on the back burner. I want, can we can we get into that? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. You transitioned about four years ago, you said? Three. Three years ago. And can you tell me why you decided to wait so long? Main reason, I didn't want to embarrass my family. I didn't want to be disowned, that type of thing. And growing up in a small town, everyone knew my parents, my family, so, you know, my family was kind of well-known in the area. And so I didn't want to do anything to embarrass them. And you thought transitioning would embarrass them? Yes. I had made a pact. I'm going to say it was somewhere in the mid to late 90s. I made a pact that once certain family members of mine were deceased and moved on, that I would transition. I wanted to wait till pretty much everyone was gone. And I lost my mom in 99. I lost my dad in 2012. Um, I had an aunt that was my father's sister that I was really, really close to. And she was the last one. And she passed in 2016. And then I kept putting it on the back burner, putting it on the back burner, you know, being scared to transition. In early 2021, I started having a lot of a lot of issues with anxiety and depression and I went to my doctor and to talk to him about changing up some of my meds and he's like well we can change your meds all day but eventually those are not going to work for you either and unless you address the issue the real issue the underlying issue you're never going to be happy so I left and when I got in my car I knew exactly what I needed to do and I sat there and just bawled crying I knew that it was time, that I had to. I kind of feel like if I hadn't started transitioning that I wouldn't still be here. Um, but it's, wow. it's just, you know, just imagine for the first like 49 years of your life feeling weird, feeling like you weren't in the right body, feeling different from everyone and not really, for the longest time, not being able to pinpoint what you were, what was going on. And finally being able to do it was, was a big deal.
how has the transition mm. journey for you been, you know, starting later on in life? Um, it's been it's been pretty good for the most part. I was very fortunate because some male to female trans patients, their body will try to fight off the hormones and the estrogen. And my body didn't do that. My body was like, okay, we've been waiting for this. You know, we're, we're good to go. So I've been able to get very good results from actually taking pills, not having to do shots or patches. I've been able to get the results I want from taking the medicine. How has dating been since you've transitioned? It's been very interesting. Very interesting. I don't, I don't know if it's like this everywhere. But like the area I'm in, so many men that I talk to or want to go out on a date with, like some of them want to treat you like you're a fetish or that you're only there to fulfill their fantasies, that you're not a real person. Are you on dating apps? I am. I am. And so they just blow up. When I was in Florida, it's like they were just... They were blowing up, but I really didn't pay any attention to them. Is it like Grinder or is it like Tinder? Um, I try to not use I try to not use Grinder if I can help it because I had had a really bad experience last year on Grinder. Um, do, you, do you want to go into that? I'll tell you the story, and then you can we can decide if we want to leave it. Okay. Last year, I was on Grinder, and I had met. Was talk started chit chatting with this guy. We were just talking, and he was like, "Yeah, I've moved here from Virginia Beach to help take care of my mom, and I love trans women. I would love for us to go out, for us to meet, or whatever sometime." And I'm like, "Okay, that you know, that's cool. We can do that." And we were chatting and chatting and chatting, and before I knew it, he had talked me into letting him come over. So he came over, and we chatted and stuff, and you know. I'm sure this is going to paint me to be whorish, but one thing led to the other, and we we started fooling around, and then he wanted to take it to a next step, and I told him I didn't want to, that I didn't feel comfortable doing that, and he basically held me down and basically wrecked me. When it was happening, I didn't really understand what was going on, and then after he left, it hit me, and I sat down in a chair and just cried and my dog ran over there to me and jumped up in my lap and was like all on me because he knew I was scared and I was dumb I didn't report him to the police because I was scared and basically I blocked him and reported him on the app and for the longest time it made me scared of going out on dates it made me scared of talking to guys and i'm sure this happens to many many trans women and it's just it's a, it's a very scary thing and you know when it's happening you don't really know what's happening and i was scared because i couldn't get him off of me and i was scared to scream because i was afraid he would like strike me and knock me unconscious and i was just it was just it was awful it's i didn't think i would have to experience that i mean I'm so sorry you went through that. That is so traumatic. And the sad reality is I think that that story is very common with trans women. Yeah. And it's so horrible. And it was probably a brutal awakening to you of this is now part of my story. Yeah, yeah, very much. And um, I have a, a friend, she's trans, and she transitioned when she was in her 20s. And we're about the same age. And I talked to her about it. And she told me it happened to her a few times when she was younger and you know she just got on to me she's like you need to be more careful and you need to quit you need to delete that app and she's kind of been my mentor kind of giving me the cliff notes version of how to transition because she didn't get that she didn't have anyone but she's kind of looked out for me and helped me with a lot of things and i've been very very thankful for that Thank you for sharing that. It's a really honest story, but I think that a lot of people, unfortunately, will relate to it. I, I, want, I hope so, because it's, but also I want people transition to know that it's not always going to be like that. It's not everyone, but you have to be super, super careful, because, like, after that happened, I told my ex-boyfriend, and he ordered me a taser. 
And he's like, I want you to keep this with you all the time. When you're out in public, when you're at home, I want you to have it. So if something was to happen, you would have some sort of way to defend yourself. And so I keep it with me all the time, except of course I couldn't bring it on here, but I feel pretty safe on here. But yeah, I keep that with me and um, I just, whenever I go out in public by myself, I just make sure I always know my surroundings. such a big decision for you to decide to wait till everyone has died in your family for you to live in your authentic self. Right. Do you regret that decision now? Do you wish that you had transitioned with your family still alive? I wish I had started earlier. If all was truth, I probably should have started at least after my mother passed away because she passed away very suddenly and I was only like 27 when she passed away and me and my mother were really close. I feel like after at that point, I probably should have tried to get help or get therapy to get it going. So I do regret waiting so late in life, but I've also learned that you're never too old to be able to live your true self and try to be happy. Was there ever a moment where you thought, I'm going to tell them and if they kick me out, they kick me out, but I need to, I need to be honest with myself. I think I was too scared during that time because I was an only child and I was spoiled. I didn't think I had enough courage at that time to prepare myself where I could have eventually had the rug ripped out from under me. I just, I was too scared. Has it changed your depression and your anxiety? Um, it has. Um, I still have a little bit of anxiety. I still have a little bit of depression, but it's not like it was because like before I felt like I didn't have any hope. There was nothing, just nothing. It's like kind of like now I feel like I have hope. Like, I feel like there's more out there for me than just what I've done. When you decided, I'm going to wait until the most important family members are gone from this life, mm -hmm. did you tell your friends that was going to be your decision? Did your friends know that you're going through this identity? They knew. They knew. Some of my closest friends knew. Nobody was really surprised about it. They were all, like, really, really supportive, or they would be like, it's about time. Um, the only person that I think had the most trouble with accepting it was Toby. You can sit down. Oh. Okay, cool. Okay. Thank you for connecting me to her and for being so nice to me at this cruise. It's been really beautiful getting to know of you. Of course, of course. So we had had a conversation about her coming out as trans and she was saying that you had the hardest time accepting her for who she is because you had been friends for so long and all of a sudden this person is a different person than you knew. Can you talk about your journey in, in that? I think it was more or less like maybe mourning the loss of the friend that I knew as, you know, her boy, you know, being a boy. And so I was trying to mourn the loss of the person that I knew and learn who this new person, you know, really was deep, deep inside. I understand t totally. And I really appreciate your honesty because I think a lot of people would be scared to even admit that they're having these feelings because it could be looked at as a certain type of way. But I think that it's a very normal feeling if you're friends with someone for 20 years or whatever, and all of a sudden they transition, it's like, oh, whoa, like, okay, is this, is everything okay? Like, you know what I mean? So I appreciate your vulnerability and sharing how you reacted. When she told you, I'm now gonna be trans and I'm she, her, and I'm a woman, what did you say back? I said, I want you to be happy. It's about you being happy and it doesn't matter like what I think or anyone else thinks, but you're doing this for yourself and you need to stay on track with that. When did things take a turn for the positive when you realize like this is who she authentically is and this is what's best for her and she's been going through all these depressions and stuff and now she's in a better place like when, when did that happen i mean i think that was sort of like on the serious side was sort of right away but i think that it took me pr probably really almost a year maybe to really process you know that this was for real and this was who she was going to be he had a really really hard time um accepting it even to the fact that he had told his husband that this was a phase I was going through, that I would eventually get bored of it or I wouldn't want to do all this extra work of being a woman every day and everything. Did you resent him for not accepting you? I did quite a bit, 
quite a bit at the beginning because like I said with most of my friends they were they just automatically jumped on the bandwagon and accepted me where he didn't it was very very hurtful and whenever he would would misgender me or say anything either way I would lash out at him and it really like hurt our friendship for quite a while where I was afraid that we weren't going to be able to friends anymore because I, I kept trying to make him understand that this is who I am. This is who I have to be or I'm not going to be here anymore. And he finally, finally accepted it. But it was, I think it was the hardest on him of anyone. How has your relationship changed since she's transi- transitioned? I mean, I think it's just become normal now because I feel like that she is really who she was supposed to be. Her personality is still there what I've always known it's just you know she's just more happy you know being who she is like who she was supposed to be the whole time you know did he ever apologize to you for the way that he handled it at the beginning not really um he doesn't really apologize for things he just kind of does it in his own way without saying I'm sorry he, he'll just do things to kind of make up for it you might say or he'll come around so it's kind of like it's kind of like he apologized, but he didn't actually apologize. And I, I don't need that from him, you know, because like I told him, I said, this is me. This is who I'm going to be. You either have to accept it or you don't. But I'm not going to remain around you if you're not going to accept it or you're going to not refer to me by the correct name or the correct pronouns. I said, I know it's going to take time. I know that when you've known me for all these years as a different person now all of a sudden I'm Paisley all the time I understand it's going to take some used to getting used to but you're going to have to accept it Mm -hmm. to remain my friend and be in my life you don't have a choice have you two had a conversation about that year of time that it took for you to accept her have you guys talked about that ever a little bit we had a couple I don't want to say fallouts, but we had a couple little hiccups, you know, here and there. And, um, and I kind of said, I think I need some time to kind of really process this for me because, you know, not only is this affecting you, but it's affecting other people that are around you as well. And I want you to realize that. And I think that she had to process that like, oh, okay, this is affecting other people too, because I'm not entirely the person that I was before. How do you feel about that? I do feel like that was that was true. It was true because I guess I expected everyone to just be on board right away. You know, especially Toby knowing me all these years. And I didn't ever think that it would be like the mourning or loss of someone. Because to me, I'm the same person I've always been. It's just I feel more like who I'm supposed to be on the inside and the outside. One, because for you, it's like you've known this about yourself for so many years, so it's so easy for you to just be like, okay, I'm changed. Right. When you came around and, you know, decided to embrace you for who you are, how did that make you feel? It made me feel very happy and thankful that I wasn't going to lose one of my best friends. You two have a really beautiful relationship, and I'm so happy that, you know, this didn't cause the fallout of the friendship because you both hold such special places in each other's hearts it was a, it was just a rough transition and we got through it i mean so and yes I'm you did she's happy <laughs> it's a beautiful relationship and honestly I'm, I'm i'm so happy to have this moment because i've talked to a lot of people with maybe about their parents not accepting them like we talked about or their spouse and not accepting them but i've never fully talked about the friendships and how a friendship of so many years and you know how it looks when someone transitions and I'm I just thank you both for your honesty and your vulnerability about it because it's real and it's truthful and it's powerful to hear you know so thank you both and you know she she lost um, most of her family at this point and so you know she always had her gay family but you know her blood family you know, passed away, and so I knew that, you know, her gay family meant a lot to her because that's what she has left, you know. So I knew how important that was to her. It's like your chosen family. Exactly, exactly. And they hold a big place in your heart. Definitely. Yeah. Some more than others. 
<laughs> it's so nice. To, obviously, I'm, I'm gonna see you. It's so nice. To talk to you. Hi, thank you. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> thank you. I'll give you one more hug. Thank you, my love. I I just want to give courage to other older trans people that are scared or think I'm too old. I can't do it. Or uh, my friends will be gone, or my family will be gone. I just want them to know that no matter how old you are, you can be your authentic self, and that I'm living proof of that. I love it. It's like it's never never too late to live your best life, and and I, I find an inspiration in that too, you know, that I can wake up tomorrow and decide I want to do whatever I want to do in life, and it's never too late, and that's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I loved spending time with Paisley and Toby. They really became two of my closest friends on the cruise because they were just so nice and supportive and they invited me to dinner with them and they just made me feel so appreciated the whole entire cruise and to be honest that's one of my favorite things about the show in particular is that it connects me to such beautiful people like for instance toby came up to me originally on the cruise because he had watched the show and through that this beautiful friendship and connection was made and i just i thank you all so much for watching the show and for the support. I want to start doing these little segments at the end of each episode so I can share my thoughts and also because lately I've just been craving a deeper connection with you and I just feel like this could be a great way for me to touch in with you and to touch base and also just to let you know what's going on in my life and a little bit more about me. I did want to let you know that I'm looking for an editor to help me out with the episodes and I really want to find somebody who watches the channel so that you kind of know my vibe and my tone and what I'm going for with the show. So if that is you and you are interested, please email me links of any of your work, also your rates and where you live. And I use Final Cut when I edit. So if you use that too, that would be wonderful because it'd be very easy to workflow together. I love doing these episodes on the cruise because it just felt like something new and just stretched me and brought me outside of my comfort zone. And it just made me feel like I grew so much as a person and I had so much self-realization during that time. But I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments about what you thought of these three episodes on the cruise. And also if you know of other queer activities or queer events like the cruise, let me know that too because I would love to do more of these. It was really fun to go there blind and to kind of figure out along the way who I was going to talk to and I'm really proud and just so thankful for the stories that I found. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode and that you're subscribed and I will see you next week.